begging for a tip mate to get on the end of it. And what a great finish it is. Perfect body, isn't it? He strikes so well. What an excellent finish. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name's Alad for Set Play Gaming, this is the FIFA 23 West Brom career mode, it is the Road to Glory Lady Boudroid Season 6, Episode 119, we're going to jump into the team management screen, I've been promising this, these are the formations we're going to go through this season, and uh, if we come up against a top tier side, we're most likely going to play 9 men behind the ball in this formation, Leno in goal, Sharp and Tymon as the fullbacks. O'Shea in centre back in the middle with Mechalidis and McCrory either side of him. Ducore and Neil holding the midfield in central midfield. Diangana and Tavernier on the wings with Kelechi Ayanacho up top. You don't see him there because he's got a bruised shoulder, so he's actually in the reserve right now. But usually it would be him. And then you would see Devishoglu as the backup striker. And again, that's interchangeable depending on what we need. Uh, but for the most part, the main thing to look out for here is not knowing at the moment whether we're going to have Neil as the go-to guy going forward or Ducore is going to be that guy. Ducore is actually better um, defensively because he's got better tackling and he's also got better interceptions. If we come up against a team that we think we might be able to get a strong result against, so like an even even keel kind of team, then we're going to go 4-1, 4-1, and this is how we'll line up. You can see it's a little bit flatter um, from midfield onwards, but Ducouré is playing in an advanced position and McCrory's moved to defensive midfield, um, and that just gives us a little bit of options going forward. Now, if we come up against a team where we do think we are a stronger team, then we can probably bring Bellingham in, who is a little bit more of a central attacking midfielder than Ducore and Neil. And that means McCrory will drop to the bench, and you'll see Ducore go into defensive mid, with Neil as sort of like an engine type central mid, and Bellingham more as the playmaker. But that, for the most part, is how we're going to look. Um, I'm going to experiment with 5-3-2 as well and hopefully try and play a combination of strikers up front. Now, coming up in today's episode, we have Arsenal at home, Leicester City away and also Sheffield United in round two of the Carabao Cup. We'll also have some transfer news as well, so keep going for that. Let's get on with today's games and see how we crack on. This is it, the start of the season as we take on Arsenal at home. Um, A.D. Boothroyd in his build-up in the press conference has called for focus um, given how strong Arsenal players quality is Sadio Mane, Odegaard, uh, Victor Osimhen, fantastic players uh, we will have to be at our absolute best and it's not always easy coming in on the opening day of the season you can see on the bottom here this is our lineup. But the previous results against Arsenal, lost 2-1, lost 4-1. We actually lost 4-1 on our home soil last season. Probably did better away at the Emirates than we did at home. Looking for a big, big improvement today. And you can see the regular 5-4-1 here. Opening few minutes, Osimhen takes flight. Off he goes and a chance for Mikelidis to show his strength and muscle him off the ball. It's a good start for the Greek centre-back. And then, nine minutes in, Sadio Mane over the top, looking to try and bring Osimhen in. In comes O'Shea, gets a foot on the ball, and then Sharp clears up and gets the ball away. Mikalidis again with the interception on Zanotti. 15 minutes in, it's going to come to Odegaard. Lays it off, good block, and another block by Mikalidis. That's two or three interceptions already in the opening 15 minutes win the free kick we're going to do everything we can to try and keep the score down here we don't want to be too ambitious against the top side simply because they've got the quality to just unlock you with one or two sharp passes we also want to try and cut down on some of the silly goals that we conceded last year from corner kick situations where they played it short Ducore with some good strength there as we managed to win another free kick, this time in Arsenal's territory. 
And so we go in at the break. Half time. It is nil nil. Everything looking good for us. Osterman plays it in. It's whacked away by O'Shea. Anywhere will do there. The only disappointment from the first half is that we didn't really threaten them, but the main thing is, is that we've managed to stop any of their attacks. Another good interception there by Mikalidis. McCrory with a long pass out to Dean Garner there. And then on 71 minutes, you'll see it's going to come to Gabriel. He's a misplaced pass. A little bit of press here from West Brom. Ducore holds it up. It's intercepted. And then Taver Tavernier comes over. And then a pass back to the goalkeeper. And it goes astray. A chance for West Brom just to apply a little bit of pressure. And we know how dangerous we can be from corner kicks. And he cross swung in. Headed away. Ducore is going to retrieve this. Back to Tavernier. Spins away from Mondi. Crosses it into the back post. It's headed back across. And Devashoglu's there. But they somehow managed to scrap it away. That was our best chance. Ten minutes left. Kyle Walker-Peters into Kakare. Shot. Odegaard with a low shot. And a great save, Bert Leno. Thankfully, it wasn't in the top corner. O'Shea did well to block the first one, but he couldn't stop the second shot coming in. Batten down the hatches. The final few minutes will be nervy. Arsenal again looking for the winner. Into Brozovic. Takes it past Mikalides. And a great save by Bernd Lino as he gets down and pushes that wide. A strong hand on it. You'll see. It is actually going in. I'll see another look here. It's a great save by the veteran goalkeeper. Arsenal trying to get the ball back into our half. Here they come again. And it's played through. Osimhen's onside. He tries a cheek, cheeky chip. But Leno too smart to it. And that was their chance. We end up getting a point here on the opening day of the season. I am absolutely delighted with that. What a fantastic improvement. Um, considering we conceded four to them last year, I will take a point off the Gunners every day of the week. Um, yes, we didn't threaten at all, really. Uh, but nine men behind the ball, it was always going to be tough. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. But I am absolutely delighted with that. On to the second game. Some breaking transfer news for you. We have signed right back Bart Van Roy from NEC in the Netherlands and agreed a £24,000 uh, per week contract. There he is. He's going to play backup rotation to Dylan Sharp. And the reason why we signed him is because we have sold Daniel Furlong to Aston Villa for 4.1 million. Um, this was a good fee for somebody that's 31. He's going to hit the slopes uh, next year. So it just makes sense to cash in and bring in somebody that can play rotation. Ethan Ingram's also agreed to move on. He's gone to Mechelen for 1.3 million. And we've also agreed to sell Rico Richards. The transfer for Richards... He's gone to Bashak Shahir for 3.5 million. Uh, so we've got some good fees uh, there for those sole players. That brings you up to date with the transfers up till now. Let's get on with the game against Leicester City. Here we are for game number two, taking on Leicester City at the King Power Stadium. AD Woodroyd in the build-up to this game, calling for the same mentality and focus from game one. Isn't always easy to do, but this is our lineup. Leno in goal, back five, Sharp, McCrory, O'Shea, Time and Michaelidis. And then uh, in midfield, Sheikh Ducour and Dan Neal, Joe Bellingham joins him and then Dovishoglu and Iannaccio up front. Not how it shows you there. I did actually change it. So I'm going with a 5-3-2 today. Opening few minutes. And you can see Pedersen trying to move in from that wing back spot. Mikalidis comes across, makes the interception. And then opening 10 minutes. Ducore back to Neil. Back to Ducore. He's going to play this in. Dovishoglu turns into the box. Set up Iannaccio. And just didn't have the um, quick fire finish 
needed and the goalkeeper manages to smother the ball. 21 minutes in. Dovishoglu out on the wing here. Back to Sharp. Sharp into Neil. Neil into Bellingham. Bellingham into Ayanacho. Out comes the goalie. And Ayanacho can't finish that one. Approaching the half hour. Bellingham trying to win the ball off Araujo. Played in. Araujo. Great chance. In comes Mikalidis. Makes a great interception. Look at the pressure they're trying to put us under there. Understanding the roles. Ten minutes to go till half time. Aaron Barry. Through to Otavio. He's into the box. Elliot. Into Pinto. Great interception and timing gets it clear. Five minutes left till half time. Ayanacho flicks it on. But Elliot is back with the ball. He accelerates away from Decore into the box. Araujo gets past O'Shea. But his shot is lashed wide. O'Shea did enough to put him off. And we go into the break. Nil nil. This is exactly what we want. We just need one chance either from a set piece from the corner or on the counter attack. And here, five minutes after the break, Ducore, Dovishoglu takes it wide, takes on Bravo. Great cross, looking for Ayanacho, but it's headed away. And then Pinto rides the challenge of Mikalidis into Otavio. Elliot, look how fast they're pinging this ball around. Elliot into Pinto. Great effort here, and a wonderful save by Leno. And then some pressure here by West Brom on 60 minutes. They give the ball away. And Neil into Ayanacho. Wins the ball. Brings it down. He just can't get it into the other corner. And goes near post instead. First real, real big chance for Ayanacho to score. Araujo. Great save. And McCrory gets in and clears the danger. It's going to come back again, but it's a, a low shot. Easy save for Leno. 20 minutes left. 15 minutes to go. Leicester pushing for this goal. Is Myla Saar. Great through ball. Otavio can't get there, and Araujo scores. It's a wonderful counter-attack move from Leicester. And the pass there into Otavio. Otavio does the right thing here across the box. And despite it feeling like it was a little bit more uh, even and us defending, you can see there Ayanacho's gone down. You can see here, great interception by McCrory. Played back again, Aaron Bowery into Araujo, into Saar. Great chance and a great save, kicked away. Four minutes left. And now, with a minute or so, plus stoppages, Timon holds the ball up on this wing. Does well into Tavernier. Neil to Tavernier. Takes on Pedersen, who's a bit leggy. He fouls him, but he keeps going. Crosses it in. And even though he's injured, Ayanacho rises highest and heads the ball in. It is 1 1 right at the depth. Placed, which makes it a Full credit there to Mar really Marcus Tavernier because he was fouled and he kept going. And not only that, but he stood the ball up nicely and it allows Ayanacho to rise and head the ball in. Yes, it's another draw, but considering I'm going to take that, I'm quite happy with it. We have been drawn against Sheffield United Premier League opponents in round two at the Carabao Cup. The one good thing is that it gives us a little healthy distraction away from the league. Uh, two draws in the league is a very good start for West Brom. Today we go with a much more reserved lineup. As you can see, this is how we are lining up today. Uh, some unfamiliar names making their first appearance here for West Brom. Let's hope they do well for us. Wonderfully weighted pass. And uh, opening five minutes. Sheffield United, good save by Peacock Farrell, good save, and then 
A poor clearance presents a chance for Hackford. He beats the goalkeeper. It ricochets off the post. Tofolo panics, but so does the striker and puts it over the bar. He's surviving a little bit of an early storm there. Bellingham through to Devishoglu. Cuts inside. Tried to bend that into the far corner. Not a bad effort. A little sighter on goal. Arusu to Bellingham. Bellingham. Evans is through here, looking for a good pass into Devishoglu. Out comes the goal. He makes the save. It's actually offside. Been having a look at Patrick Evans's profile. Um, really low, low 60s defending. Mostly a passer. Can't really finish. Um, so I'm going to be working on his finishing. But for the most part, I think he'll be training as a playmaker because of his passing. And a useful cross. Great pass from Rashita and Kual with a great chance there. And Jersey back with the save. And then Kual here into Bellingham. 25 minutes in. Bellingham into Devishoglu. What a great chance this is. Devishoglu across comes the defender and blocks the shot. Make no mistake about it. This isn't going to be an easy game. And then Devishoglu looking for the shot. It's blocked again. Stoppage time in the first half. He's found it tough going this for opening 45 minutes. Sheffield United have marshalled him well. And because of that, we will go in at the break. Nil-nil. It's a familiar scoreline for Eddie Boothroyd. But what changes can he make to break the deadlock here at Bramall Lane? Restart in the second half. Played through. And a good save, Hackford with a shot. And Peacock Farrell stands up front post and makes a great save. Given away, Patrick Evans lofts it over. Great chance for Devishoglu. And he beats the goalkeeper. Jersey back, but it ricochets ferociously off the post. So unlucky. And then just before the hour... Wallace into Anoma, great tackle from Evans, but they ride that, and then he rides the challenge through to the edge of the six-yard box, and a fantastic stop by backup goalkeeper Bailey Peacock-Farrell. I don't know how he manages to just drift past that stand tackle. 22 minutes left, Bellingham drops the shoulder to get round Oyazaraga, and then into uh, Campbell, Therese Campbell just on into the box instead of shooting he stands that up and look at this lead from Devishoglu he heads it into the corner and Jersey back can't get across or should we say Jersey back can't get back across really well played by Therese Campbell interesting fact actually um, I've been shooting with Therese Campbell on his right and I found out He's actually left-footed, predominantly left-footed, so we have to make sure that when we take shots with Therese Campbell, we use his left foot. And look at Eddie Booth, right? The deadlock's broken, and Devishoglu, hard-working, deserves that goal. Five minutes left, and a great chance. Femi Sariki down the right side, crossed in, laid back, Zaraga into Hackford, and a great save again by Bailey Peacock Farrell. Into stoppage time. All we've got to do is hold on. Given away by Barkley. Into Zaraga. Zaraga. Great volley and a great save. And we hold on. Just about managed to squeak past Sheffield United. And we dull the blades here and move into round three. Let's see what opponent we end up with in the draw. Let me know what you think in the comments. All right, that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, consider smashing the like button. And of course, it's completely up to you if you want to subscribe or not. I do appreciate all the support that I'm getting at the moment on the channel. And I'll be back on Sunday with another episode. We'll take on Wolves, Everton and Nottingham Forest in the Premier League. I hope you can join me. This is our lad for Set Play Gaming. See you guys real soon.